Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Ar-Rahmanirrahim. Maliki yawmiddin. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. I declare that there is no God worthy of worship other than Allah, and the Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger of Allah. Today we are going to look at the topic of friendship. And friendship is such an important part of our lives. Other than choosing our wives and our spouses or husbands, choosing friendship is probably the second most important thing, or maybe even the first most important thing that you have to do in life. Remember, we choose our friends before we choose who we're going to marry. When you're at school, you interact with people. When you're in uh, university or colleges or Technicon, you need friends to, to help study, to learn from, maybe even to do sports with. And as you get older in life, you, you depend on your friends even more in the work environment. And later in your senior years, you, you depend on friends to help you during your retiring days. Those friends that will be there with you even till the last day. So choosing friends is very, very important. Now today's topic on choosing friends and having wisdom in choosing them is aimed mainly at the younger generation. Now today people are living longer, so the younger generation may be people under the age of 40 because at the age of 60 and 80 and even older than that, people are climbing mountains like Kilimanjaro, doing extreme adventures and extreme sports. So this is not just for the young people, it's for everybody. But I'd like to speak to the youth today about choosing friends wisely and having wisdom in choosing them. You see, a true friend will see you through when others think you through. And now this statement of true friends is very important because when you're having hardships or trials in your life, what type of people will stay with you when you're going through these issues, all these problems? They say that when a man is rich and he has money, he has lots of friends. And as soon as he has no money, he has no friends. So a true friend will be there when everything falls apart. Now we can have a look in our lives as Muslims, and we can see that at our time when we were at our weakest, when we were at our most vulnerable, who was there for us? Was it our community? Was it our friends? Or was it Allah? And we know that Allah has always been there and will always be there. He is the truest friend that you can have. But on earth, we also need to have friends that we can interact with on a day-to-day -day level. So when we choose friends, we must choose ones that will be there even during the hard times, even if problems come our way. So choosing friends is very, very important. But we must also make sure that we choose our friends wisely and we do not choose our friends like popcorn. And what I mean by choosing our friends like popcorn is that as soon as they are a bit under pressure, they change from being corn and they turn into something totally different. And they pop it and then after a few hours, they're tasteless and you don't want to eat them. So popcorn, we don't want popcorn friends. So we need to choose our, our friends lightly. We need to associate with people who will lead us through life's troubles, not people that will pull us down. So when we have issues in our life that we have to deal with and, and problems come away, will they be able to be there to, to help us through? We must make sure that the associates that we have now, there's a difference between associates and friends. When you're in the workplace, the people that you work with, they're called associates. People that you're in school with, you call them associates. But the person that you are closest to, you call a friend. We need to choose our associates wisely because they may become friends later. So even our associates, we have to choose wisely because they can one day develop into friends. Notice there's an order here. First, you get to know somebody and they become associates. And later, you move it to the higher level where you become friends with the person. So we need to make sure that we do it in the right order. Often when I meet uh, people, they say, oh, my best friend is coming around. And a half an hour later when they leave, they say, oh, no, my best friend's coming around. And I ask them, how many best friends have you got? So it's very difficult to have a lot of best friends. You normally have one or two friends that really are good role models for you and good people to support you. The further distance that you get away from good friends, the more likelihood you're going to just have acquaintances in your life or associates in your life. So you need to get close to somebody who you can trust and who will be there for you. Now, the same way is we need to make sure that we do not distance ourselves from Allah. We must make sure that we remain close to Allah at all times. And the type of friends and associates that we choose, we must make sure that they encourage us to stay close to Allah and close to that relationship that we need to continuously evolve and grow in. The other thing that we need to remember is when we choose friends and we have friends who are Muslims or in the Muslim community, then we mustn't run down each other. You know, oftentimes we have people who there seems to be a type of professional jealousy. People are unhappy when someone succeeds in the Muslim community. We should be happy when our brother or our friend in the Muslim community succeeds. And therefore, we should never be caught in the trap of running down other Muslims or other Muslim organizations 
or mosques or anything like that, we should remain close to our Muslim brothers and encourage them. So we must be careful that we do not roast our brothers who are Muslims or in the Muslim community. The other thing that we need to remember is we need to become better people in ourselves. We cannot have good friends in our lives unless we are prepared to be better people ourselves. So we have to spend time considering what type of benefit we have to the person that we want to befriend. What am I going to add to that person's life? What can that person add to my life? So we need to almost have a look at ourselves under an x-ray. Now this is a very important point and I hope you remember this analogy that I'm going to give you. As an x-ray shows a doctor any broken bones or injuries, so the same thing will happen if we look at our friendships under an x-ray. Now remember when you take an x-ray, you only get a negative. So when you print an x-ray, you lift it up, you can only see what's really going on in the x-ray if you hold it up to the light. But the x-ray itself is negative. When you hold that x-ray up into the light, it suddenly becomes the full picture. You can actually see what the picture really is. And so in our lives, a lot of people are negatives to us. They are almost x-rays to us as well. You can take them up and you hold them to the light and you see that they're actually bad for us. You see the cracks and the flaws in them. And so you need to remove those people from your lives. X-rays can also build on negativities. So if you have x-ray type of people in your life, they can build on those negativities and make your life even worse. Now if you want to get a clear picture of something, what do you need to do? You take a photograph, and this is back in the old days where we actually developed photos, and you would take it to a lab and they would develop it, they'd get a negative, a negative of what the real picture looked like. And after putting it under the right treatment, under the right light, under the right chemicals, under the right conditions for just the right amount of time, you had a beautiful picture that would evolve from that negative. And so even out of negative, something positive can come. So even in our lives, if we seem to just go far away from the truth and we start going into error, and we go in true repentance and we prepare to put ourselves under the light, to be analyzed, to see what is wrong with us, we will be able to get that treatment that was required to be able to get the true picture of what our lives are supposed to be like. So choosing friends is very important, bringing the positive out and getting rid of the negative. The people that we honor and respect in our lives are the kind of people that we need to keep in our lives. People that we want to emulate, people that we want to copy. Now, you might go to your bedroom right now and you can have a look in your room and see what your room looks like. What are the pictures and what are the posters that are on your wall? Do you have pictures of film stars and celebrities and Hollywood stars and Bollywood stars? What are the pictures that you see on your wall? Maybe they are violence and anger and hate. Perhaps they are of a military coup or a war that took place 30 or 40 or 50 years ago that you think is really good to have on your wall. Maybe it's an anarchist sign that you don't want any uh, control in society. Or is it a picture that maybe has the name of Allah written on it? Maybe it's just a picture with the name Allah written. Maybe it's something, a picture of Mecca. Maybe it's something that reminds you that you're a Muslim. Now that's the type of person that you are. So when you go to your friend's house, the type of person he is, is what you see on his wall, what you see in his bedroom. Moving on to the next point. When choosing friends, we must also remember that our friends do not rely on money, or we do not rely on our friends through money or for money. Friends must not be about money or how much they can give you or how much cash they have. Friends should be based outside of money. Remember that money is given to, to people through hard labor, the work they do. And many friends lose friendships over finances or, or money lending or money borrowing. So try to remove the context of finances or money out of a friendship relationship, especially if it's starting to begin. And remember, the greatest resource in your life is not money, it's people. And people bless you, not money. So someone might come to you and say, I see you in a problem or you're having problems in your home, and they give you money, that's fine. But don't go and ask for it, because to me, I think that if you want to build on good friendships, try to keep money out of it. The other thing that we need to also remember is that many fake friends are bought with money. So they're only there for a while as long as the money's around, and as soon as the money runs out, so do they. So try to build friendships without money. Remember, money doesn't come from heaven. You know, people say, you might have heard your parents say, do you think money grows on trees? And we know that it doesn't. If it did, we'd all be cultivating nice big trees. But we know that money doesn't come from heaven. Money comes from other people. And so whenever we use money, use it wisely. Um, we are the ones who can help and bless other people and means that we can help and guide other people through the money that we have. Next point about friendship is that true friends keep no records. 
You know, if you go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a doctor or a dentist or whoever you go to, whoever professional you go to, the first thing they do is they bring out a piece of paper and they start filling it in. And as you say things, they start writing them down. And you think, well, I hope no one ever gets hold of those things because it's got my whole life story on that piece of paper. Now, a true friend shouldn't keep records. When somebody does something right, he thanks him and he enjoys that good quality or that good part of their, their nature that they've exposed. But if they do something wrong, he should also forget it. It's not his, his job to, to hold grudges and keep records of things. Hold a true friend that you have with both hands. If you have a friend, hold him with both hands because you never know if he's going to come by again or she's going to come by again. True friends are very rare to find. And if you are lucky enough in your life to have one true friend, then you're really a blessed person. So many of us are privileged to have friends in our lives. So if you find a friend in your life, hold them close. The other thing, poison is still poison even if the label doesn't say it's poison. So maybe you have a friend who is actually very bad for you. And you saw from the beginning he was hanging around with the wrong crowd. He drinks, he smokes, he takes drugs, he's a rude to women, he's rude to his family. Do you think you're going to be able to change him? A lot of people say, no, but I'm refraining him because I think I can change him. Poison is still poison, even if it doesn't have poison written on the label. So we have to be careful of the people that we associate with. We have to be careful with the people we hang around with. So choose your friends wisely and make sure that you stay away from people who are poisonous for you, who can actually pull you down. So stay away from bad associations, stay away from bad friends. And remember that if you have people that are pulling you down, you're not going to get anywhere. Now, I remember going down to, I live in a coastal town, in a coastal resort, and uh, sometimes you go down to the rocks and you see crabs, they're all running all over the rocks and they're pulling on, on any piece of food that they can find and eat it. But sometimes one crab will, will climb on top of the other one, another one on top of that one, and they'll all pull each other down. Eventually, all these crabs are on top of each other, pulling each other down. There's no loyalty. Nobody cares about the other crab. They just want to, to scuttle to get to the top and away from the tide or towards food. And there's no care and there's no compassion. They just want to stand on top of each other. So we mustn't be like crabs that are grabbing just to get the food and don't care about the person underneath us. The other thing that we can learn about the crab is that it always sidesteps. It never walks forward and it never retreats, it sidesteps. So it's, it's someone that you cannot trust. If you have a person in your life who's like a crab, they're never going to stand up for the truth. And they're never going to say yes or no, they're always going to sidestep things. So you don't want crab type personalities in your life. Some of these friends that you will find will give you things or tell you stuff that will be bad for you, tell you things that would be bad for you. And so you need to have discernment to know which friends are the ones that you want to take advice from and which friends you don't want to take advice from. We're going to take a short break and when we come back from the break we're going to continue to have a look at how to choose friendship wisely. Let's come under the shade of the scholars. So the issue is a problem of knowledge. Asim Al-Hakim. Why do people do bid'ah. Imam Malik said, whoever claims there is a good innovation in the deen. Salim Al-Amri. He is accusing that Prophet Muhammad did not convey the message. Dr. Mamduh Muhammad. If you know that the Prophet Sallallahu did something and I do something else, you have to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Don't follow me. Abdul Rahim Makati. But if each one believes his goal is to please Allah, to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abdul Rahim Green. I think this really is to do with your internal state. Where does the Quran and Sunnah point to? Muhammad Al Sharif. We have to follow what Allah and His Messenger said. Let's imbibe from these scholars the fruitful solutions for the problems of the world. Which one we would take and which one we would leave? Question to every Muslim. Question to every Muslim. In the shade of the scholars. Every Sunday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. and repeat telecast at 5.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. A friendly message by Dr. Zakir. The Islamic bomb. Islam comes from the Arabic root word salam or salam, which means peace. It is also derived from the root word silm, which means to submit your will to Almighty God. People worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs. They fail to realize that the Islamic bomb, the bomb of peace, 
has already been dropped. It fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Welcome back. We're continuing with our discussion on friendship and choosing friends wisely. Now, choosing friends wisely is very important, and what I recommend often to do is to take a piece of paper and write on, on either sides, plus and minus, whatever it might be in life. And so when you come to the same thing with choosing friendships, do the same thing. Draw positives and negatives about your friend. Do two columns and say, what are the good things about the person? What are the bad things? So you can make a discernment, decide what, whether this person is actually pulling you down or they're encouraging you to be a better person. Now, in the same way as Muslims, we need to look and see what type of things in our life that are pulling us down or what type of things are making us become a better Muslim. What are bringing us closer to the way that we should be living as Muslims? What are bringing us closer to Allah? What is making us seek the truth and reject the lie? You know, in many friendships, if we have friendships that actually encourage us to do wrong, we have friends that sometimes will look the other way and say, well, he's my friend, she's my friend. I don't really want to tell her what she's doing or what he's doing wrong. He must find out on his own. But that's not a real friend. A true friend will tell a friend what you're doing is wrong. Will help them and guide them to find the pathway back again to where they have strayed away from. With Islam, it needs to be nurtured all the time. And this brings me to a more serious point. When people lose somebody in their life, and I don't mean losing someone in a shopping center, I mean as somebody passing away. When somebody dies, it becomes very important for people to be around there afterwards, to be there for the family, to encourage them, to guide them, to be able to be there, to listen to them when they're in need. Now, what normally happens is the first week or two weeks or three weeks after somebody passes away in the family or somebody is late in the family, what happens is everybody's there in the beginning. But after the second or third or fourth month, nobody's there. And that's when the family needs you the most. So that's why friendship is so important that when our friends are in need or our friends are going through times of anguish, that we are there not only directly afterwards, but also in the times later. So when people are in anguish or they're suffering, they need somebody to be there. So continue to be a friend, not just immediately after their suffering begins, when somebody passed away, maybe they had some accident or they're in hospital or whatever. Don't be there straight away. You need to be there for the long period as well. So it's very important for you to continuously be a friend. A friend is not just a friend during the times when things go well, but he's there as well during the times when things don't go so well. Now, the story that we heard about the bear and the, and the man being attacked by a bear is one that we can, we can look at and think about because what type of friends are we choosing? Are they the ones that hide a ray up the tree or they're ones that are with us the whole way through? Now, I heard another story as well, and I'm, I'm quite well known for my many stories. And so I'll tell you another story that also helps you to identify or understand friends. There were two men walking through the desert, and it was a very hot day, and they were sweating and it was very, very dry, and they didn't have much water. And so the one man started to hallucinate. Hallucinate means he started to see things that weren't there, and he was hearing voices that, that weren't actually speaking to him. And he thought that his friend was shouting or insulting him, but he wasn't. His friend was just walking quietly next to him, just as thirsty as he was. And so he turned around to his friend, the man who was hallucinating, and he slapped him in the face. And his friend was shocked, but he didn't react because he was a friend. And so he said nothing. So what he did is he picked up a stick and he started to write in the sand. And the friend who slapped him was surprised because he didn't react, he didn't fight back, he didn't hit back, but he started writing in the sand. And so the man looked down and he said, what are you pointing, what are you busy writing in the sand there? And he said, today my best friend slapped me in my face. And so he thought, okay, well, this is a strange thing to do. But he didn't worry too much about it and he just continued walking on. Then they came a little bit further and as they walked a bit further, and uh, they came to an area where there was an oasis, where there was some water, and there was lovely water, and dates were growing, and they thought, oh, this is perfect. And so they got into the water, and they drank water, and they washed themselves, and they ate some dates, and they had a fantastic time. But as the one man came out of the, climbed out of the water, the same man that was slept, he started sinking into the mud, and it was sinking sand there. And he was busy getting further and further and further into the ground, and they didn't know what to do. And then his friend quickly found a root that was growing, and he pulled it out and he threw it to his friend and started pulling him out of the, the mud. And when he came out of the, got out of the mud, he was so happy that he had managed to save his friend. This was the man who was hallucinating before and now he, he was helping his friend. Now, 
As they sat there and they got their thoughts together, the man who had been slapped in the face went and he found a rock and he started chiseling something into the rock. Now the friend who had pulled him out, he thought, now what is he doing? First time he wrote in sand and he said, my friend, today my friend slapped me in the face and now he's chiseling something in a rock. So he went to his friend and he said, what are you chiseling in the rock over here? And he said, today my best friend saved my life. So he was amazed, he thought, now he wrote in the sand, now he's writing in rock. Now the moral of this story is, when people do bad things to us, we shouldn't remember them. We should let them be blown away by the winds as the winds come. You write them in sand. And so when the winds come, they blow away. But the good things that people do, the good things that people do to our lives and help us and, and invest in our future and invest in our spiritual growth, invest in time and, and energy into growth as a person, these we must write in stone because these are deeds and people that we do not want to forget. So as we grow in life and as we choose our friends, we must remember that we choose our friends that are going to be those ones who are going to carve our benefits, the benefits that we have in their lives or the benefits that they have in our lives in stone. And those who do things that are, that are not good for us or those who do things that are, are disappointing, we must write those things in sand and let them blow away. You know, our friendships are so very important. When I grew up, I grew up in a very small town. And I grew up in a community where it was mostly young men uh, in the community. And there was another school further away where the girls went to school. So there was a boys' school and a girls' school. And so what we used to do together as boys is we would do fun activities together. We didn't go to clubs and pubs and drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes and do drugs. We used to do enjoyable things together. We would go walking and we would do hikes and we would go to rivers and streams and we would swing from vines and we would do activities that were wholesome activities that were good for you. So when you choose your friendships, the type of friends you choose, don't always think that you have to go do things in the city or you have to do things that are haram. You can do things that are halal. You can do things that are good for you. Try and find activities that you can find the real true nature of the person by the activities that you do. Outside activities are very, very important. Now these days we have PlayStation and all these other games that people play and internet but try and do those activities if possible. Do those activities for a shorter period of time and spend more time outside and enjoy what the environment that we have. And friendships, something that needs to be treasured and you need to spend time nurturing them and make sure that these friendships are, are growing. Now it's very important for every Muslim to make sure that the types of friendships that he chooses are the ones that are going to be the friendships that are going to encourage him and, and help him to live the correct moral life that he needs to live. So we need to reject those people that are making us move further away from Allah. We need friends that are going to sit with us and want to read the Quran. We need friends with us who will want to uh, pray with us, who will want to do Salah with us. They won't disappear as soon as it comes time for Salah. They suddenly disappear because they have something to do. They don't want to do Salah, so they disappear. They have to suddenly go to the shop or buy something, or they now have to go home. But they'll do anything than actually sit there with you and do a Salah. So we have to choose friends wisely. We must make sure that the friends that we have have the habits and behavior that we would want to have um, as well. Now what I mean by this is sometimes our friends, that they can distract us or pull us away from the behavior that we used to have before. Before we met these friends, we used to do our salah. Before we met this friend that we have now, we were reading the Quran. And suddenly this person has taken you further and further away from what you loved to do before. So choose the friends. Today as I end off with this first talk on friendship, and as for the young people, I want you to think about the types of friends that you have made and try to aim for a better quality friend if those friends are in fact negative friends. Try to get positive friends. The type of friends that when you hold them up to the light, they still look exactly the same. They still look the same. You don't see any flaws, you don't see any cracks, you don't see anything that needs to be bandaged up. So in the days to come, in the weeks to come, select your friends wisely. Take time. Take time to think of those friends that are important to you. Before we end off, there's one last point I would like to, to end with. You might see a friend in the road that you've known, and now you've decided to choose new friends wisely. And as you're walking the road, he calls you, and he says, whoever you are, maybe he's calling me, he says, Arib, Arib. Now, instead of lying to the person and saying, I don't want to see you anymore, or I don't want to be with you anymore, say to him, I would love to spend time, but I'm going in a different direction. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are going in a different direction. Choose your friends wisely because you are going in a different direction. 
that friend is taking you in the wrong direction. He's taking you to the, the place that you do not want to be. So choose your friends wisely. I end with this point. Choose friends wisely. Make sure that they are taking you in the right direction. Assalamu alaikum and look forward to seeing you again.